All right, it's time for Python on Hardware News. Yeah, I'm wearing my shirt to celebrate. That's right. And there's a lot to celebrate. There because, is a lot to celebrate. Yeah, we are now up to... Seven! Version seven. So this is some Official highlights. Official release! Yes, yeah, this is the highlights. Confetti! Yeah. This is the highlights from our um, newsletter. About 9,000 people who subscribe, and this is... Uh, Over 9,000. We make it difficult to subscribe, I think, because yes. we don't spam and we don't harvest Hidden. emails. It's a separate website. So you go to AdafruitDaily. Go to AdafruitDaily.com. Yep. And then you, um, you, you can... You don't even need to subscribe if you want. You can look at the... The, the topics, yeah. um, but all you do is go to Adafruit Daily and then you know click Python for microcontrollers. But what we do is we uh, also have all of them online, so you I can like see this. them. I actually, to be honest, I don't read it within my mail client. I read it in the browser. Oh yeah. Yeah. I read it in GitHub. That's we have cool. It on GitHub. That's true. Yeah, that's, you do. Yeah. yeah, you can. Um, so Circuit Python Seven is available. Uh, we went over some of the things that it has in it, um, but I would say. The, the biggest feature that maybe folks should check out? A lot of stuff. The, okay. The so, S2 stuff? I, I um, ESP32 S2 support, more, better support. Yeah. We do have um, the Bluetooth workflow stuff, which is there, but we haven't really published about it. Of course, keypad is a big thing. Um, as the logo implies, we've caught up to um, MicroPython Yeah, 1. this was 1. like 6, the great merge. Which was a big deal. That took like a month. So we, we merged all the way up, and now we're keeping up. So I think that they just released 117. So we'll update to that. Um, RP2040 yeah. support, of course. You know, we did a, a few small breaking changes to PWM. Um, but, like, a lot of work actually went into it. Lots and lots and lots of work went into 7. And no. um, I'm really excited by all of it. And I'm also excited to, to you know, we're basically, we're going to do 7.1. You know, we always do a little bit, 0.1, maybe 0.2. But we will be basically going um, next up to 8. 8 is probably going to be. Um, it's going to be an 8. There's no one, we, this has not been made public. Yeah, I make, I decide people like, what is in the versions? I actually kind of decide. Do you? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't know if you knew who was in charge of this project. Ah. I mean, Scott's the lead, but I, yeah. I, I, I give. Well, we always, we always kind of. I'm the I think, muse, I, I hope. think we come together and we're just like, what would, what are the things that could be the, the best for the community, and where the, where is the community going, and where can we go together? I, yeah, I don't look. I'm never going to like pick something that doesn't make sense. But you yeah. know, I feel like Circuit Python is mature enough that I actually want to go back and um, add, um, you know, asynchronous slash threading slash interrupt. You know, some combination of the. I don't know if it's going to be all three, but some combo of that. So interrupts. That yeah, maybe have some sort of interrupt support. Which actually, yeah. you know, it's funny. Jepler added a PR to add time steps to keypad um, events. And a keypad, a, a vector keypad is basically a list of interrupts. So you, you actually could, you, you do have interrupt support in a sense of you can have asynchronous logging of, of, of pin triggers if you wanted to. And of course, we have sleep support that we added in six. Um, for our, our sleepy time release. But I think it's, you know, we're going to, we do have a sync IO actually in um, CircuitPython, but we haven't yeah. really played with it. And we also want to make it a little more C Python compatible. So definitely the first thing we're going to do is, is get, I was also kind of waiting because I know, you know, it, in the la the few years that we've been doing CircuitPython, C Python, you know, mainline Python has also been kind of noodling with, you know, threading and asynchronous and interrupting. And I wanted to kind of see if they ended up making any decisions. Um, because, of course, we'd like to be CPython compatible as possible. But they really have settled on async I.O. Is it the best possible way to do it? It doesn't matter. Chicken or fish, this is what you got. You can't have steak. Okay? <laughs> we have chicken or fish. And so um, given that, you know, I think having async I.O. And, and seeing how to integrate that with the, you know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stuff, because we do, we do have asynchronous things happening in CircuitPython. Um, you know, a lot of times the people, the things that people want to do, I'm like, well, we kind of have that actually. It's the, the wave playback, the display IO stuff, um, the USB stuff, um, you know, I2S is all done asynchronously. We have actually a lot of DMA stuff going on behind the scenes, um, but giving more access to that and doing it in a way that does what people expect, because I think People are like, oh, you don't have interrupts, and MicroPython has interrupts, but if you actually use interrupts in MicroPython, they don't work the way you think they do. They, they work differently, and I think um, we've chatted in, in the team about how can we implement interrupt management in a way that does what people want, because Python is different than Arduino and bare metal programming. It's, it, you, you're not, you can't just use the interrupt vector, right? We're, do, we're doing something different. Um, because the interrupt vector is used by the runtime, and you're in a runtime. It's 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 
having context, where is the interrupt coming from, is non, it's really non-trivial, which is why we're waiting till eight. But I think we're gonna look at it in depth and we're gonna see what we can do. Okay. Um, and then uh, we had a special video mm. that Jeff put together. Yeah. So you wanna talk about this before I play it? Oh yeah, we're also doing um, you know, a couple little things like um, you know, ESP32, S2 can do parallel display support. And I was like, oh, you know, let's, let's do that. I kind of want to do a Pi portal with the ESP32, S2. So, yeah, let's show this video. Jepler finally got this working. Yeah, all right. Jepler here, showing CircuitPython using the parallel bus to drive an external display. CircuitPython 7 supports the parallel display bus on several microcontrollers, including the ESP32, S2 from Espresso. In a pull request I'm working on, we'll make the ESP32-S2 even faster and more flexible. Here I'm showing just how fast my work-in-progress code is at refreshing the text console. Depending on the display, you may be able to connect to it using I2C, SPI, or a parallel bus. Because a parallel bus transmits multiple bits at a time, it can be faster than the other two, but it uses a lot more microcontroller pins. If you have a Pi portal and have ever wondered why the display refreshes so much more quickly than on some other boards with CircuitPython, this is why. And that's our Python on hardware news this week. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Special previews too. That's yeah. Just, that's exciting. Yeah. If y'all have any ideas, uh, suggestions for the interrupt stuff, projects that you want to do with interrupts or concurrency or async I/O, there's a thread on the uh, CircuitPython issues that you can you can post in. Um, with ideas. We're trying to collect what people want to do because, again, it's, it's interrupts and concurrency in a scripting language do not work the same as a compiled language. It's different, okay? It's not going to be the same thing. Um, and uh, we have a lot of very skilled computer scientists all thinking about this. Yeah. 